بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹ مائی نیم از ڈاکٹر محمد عدنان اسگر اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس دا سیکنڈ پارٹ آف فنڈامنٹلز آف ڈائنامک مکینیکل انالیسز ڈی ایم اے انڈر دا سبجیکٹ آف تھرمل انالیسز ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹ سو فار we have studied some of the important aspects of dma in which we have studied the rheology stress strain and we have already studied the ideal and real behaviors and discuss the hooke's and newton's law along with the linear and non linear regions non newtonian time independent liquids and non newtonian time dependent liquids while we have already studied the visco elasticity in which we have studied some of the important aspects or phenomena where viscous visco elasticity was involved and visco elasticity with time dependence now uh, we will we are going to discuss visco elastic characterization although an other section or lecture may offers a more detailed description of these types three methods of visco elastic characterization may be uh, mentioned here number 1 is the creep creep is the stress remains constant while the strain is recorded as a function of time the most accurate instrument for this kind of test in solids is tma thermo mechanical analysis dma is the uh, dynamic mecha- uh, mechanical analysis also works in thermo mechanical analyzer mode the second one is stress relaxation the strain is held constant while the stress is recorded as a function of time the third one is dynamic mechanical analysis the sample is subjected to a sinusoidal stress and the stress is recorded as a function of time in dynamic mechanical analysis these kinds of tests are normally performed with dma instrument although they may be done with other rheometers time temperature superposition some of the scientist named was williams landol and ferry observed relationships between the time and temperature in the mechanical properties of many polymers these scientists empirically obtained an equation that made it possible to shift the data away from the experimental range later on a theoretical basis and other models were developed 
the first one was a relationship between time and temperature a short time is equivalent to a low temperature this figure 9 shows how the modulus changes with time and temperature in a typical polymer while the relationship between frequency and temperature the fact of a high temperature is similar to a low frequency or deformation rate figure 10 shows the modulus variation along with temperature and frequency the next one is the time and temperature superpositioning since data taken at higher temperatures represented the data taken at lower frequencies that is the long times and the data taken at lower temperatures actually represent the behavior at higher frequencies higher frequencies mean short time the data can be shifted horizontally to create a master curve that actually describes the behavior beyond the experimental range this figure 11 and figure 12 show respectively the shortage modulus variation with frequency at different temperatures and master curve constructed over a wide range of frequencies and the next is the principle of dynamic mechanical analysis as we have discussed and we will learn uh, in our next lectures a DMA apparatus may be used for working in several modes however a stress controlled instrument has been devised for working in dynamic mode the stress controlled dynamic mode consists of measuring the strain in the sample while applying a control sinusoidal or waveform stress it is also possible to work with strain control in this case a controlled sinusoidal strain is actually applied while the stress response is measured the next one is geometries the actuator in DMTA is a drive shaft that moves in a linear way forward and backward some fixtures were designed to permit testing different samples in 
different ways with single and double cantilever bending the geometry was devised to test solid bars for example laminates can be directly tested in this manner thin layers can also be tested on a solid bar support uh, this figure actually shows a single cantilever assembly the three point the three point flexural test considered the most suitable for every stiff material can be seen in this figure 15 the boundary effect of the clamps often the case with the cantilever geometries is avoided the boundary effect of the clamps often the case with cantilever geometries is avoided this test also works well with materials that expand significantly with reference to the temperature cylindrical and rectangular tensile geometry is supposed to be the ideal one for the samples that require a small force for deformation such as films fibers and elastomers this figure 16 uh, shows a rectangular sample assembled to the fixtures the next one is the uh, figure 17 in which compression fixtures can seen are usually appropriate for resilience evaluation in foams and gels the next type is shear sandwich although although the uh, dma has developed to a test more or less solid like materials this geometry can be used to test gel melts and viscous fluids care must be taken to prevent the sample from leaking on a drive shaft normally a horizontal position is preferred for this kind of test elastomers can also be tested with this geometry know the modes of operation and variables although in dynamic mechanical analysis instruments are built with internal stress control in practice they can work under both stress and strain control in either case the instrument can be operated in dynamic and stationary transient modes the tests test are usually classified according to the type of control and mode of operation these can be summarized as transient dynamic and 
the rest of the other DMA test. The first one is transient. It is static load creep and TMA mode. Constant strain stress relaxation. It can be strain rate testing which is the stress strain curves. After transient they may be dynamic in nature. It may be a single point which is to set parameters and it may be the time sweep at constant frequency and strain. Dynamic strain sweep, frequency sweep, temperature sweep and combinations of frequency and temperature sweep. The ma main variables involved in a strain controlled dynamic mechanical analysis test are deformation or strain, rate or frequency deformation, temperature ramp or step isothermal, time or stress which is the a response since it is a strain controlled experiment. In a stress controlled experiment, strain is the measured response. In figure 19 to 20, uh, in this figure, it actually illustrates the evaluation of the controlled variables and responses in typical operational modes. Figure 9 shows how the strain amplitude varies in a dynamic strain sweep test. It is normal to find a region of uh, it is a normal to find a region of strain amplitude where the storage modulus is constant or varies linearly followed by a non-linear region where the shortage or storage modulus decreases. The normal evolution of moduli with frequency is plotted in this figure 20. The higher the frequency, the higher the modulus. Viscosity decreases on outcome on outcome of The viscosity decreases and outcome constant with the pseudo the higher uh, on pseudo plastic behavior of most polymers. On the left hand side of the uh, this figure is actually there are two possible temperature profiles in a temperature controlled experiment. The evolution of moduli and trans is actually plotted on the right showing the peak in the trans theta which correspond to the glass transitions. While uh, some of the figures are actually uh, represents the response of ideal solids which are elastic ideal liquids which are viscous and polymers viscoelastic to step changes in stress deformation, strain deformation and rate deformation respectively. Earlier a strain stress curve obtained from a nickel titanium wire in a strain rate test was presented in the first lecture of this fundamental DMA 
uh, and th that was the figure one as per I remember its behavior almost linear uh, until breaking it's very diff different from the one obtained with the thermoplastics moreover it is apprehended to observe that some of the important aspects of uh, DMA choosing the magnitude for the controlled parameters sometimes previously gathered information may help us to choose the experimental conditions for analyzing the new material in any case the experimental setup should take into account where parameters have to be known about the material and what the physical form of that material is when considering the test of new sample in dynamic mechanical analysis many questions may arise in your mind such as which geometry or which mode of operation is most suitable in general these questions can be answered by following the criteria indicated in the uh, last conversation and remembering the limitations of the instrument for example for testing a gel shear sandwich is possible in principle an uncured thermo setting resin can be supported on a wire mesh and tested in double cantilever mode a very stiff metal bar is not appropriate for testing in tensile mode because the force needed to deform it is higher than the maximum force allowed by the instrument on the other hand a very thin wire made up of the same metal can be tested in tensile mode once the geometry and operation mode have been chosen assuming it is the clear which parameters are of the interest it is necessary to set up the magnitude of the controlled parameters this is especially true with dynamic experiments where one parameter is kept constant to illustrate the problem consider the case of a dynamic strain controlled temperature ramp test the range of temperature is of interest to the study and is constrained by the instrument's highest limit as well as the sample's features such as a uh, melting point the other two magnitudes to set up are the frequency and strain amplitude it is a good idea to perform two quick test at room temperature to choose these magnitudes dynamic strain and frequency sweep test 
we will study the dynamic strain sweep test and the frequency sweep sweep test in the next lectures thank you very much